Hello and welcome to our final video in our Through My Bible in One Year series here at St. John's. As you wrap up the book of Job and uh, the book of Revelation and read the final psalm in, in the uh, listing of psalms that you had in your reading list, that's really a, an amazing thought that you will have completed the entire Bible. As you had come to Job 19, though, in these past week's readings, and that famous passage of Job, I know that my Redeemer lives. I asked you to think of the context in which Job says that, which can shed some light on the meaning of that particular statement. In chapter 19 of Job, Job is responding to his friend Bildad, who has accused him of being a great sinner and talked about how just God is. If God is a just God, and he is, and he's punishing Job, that's what it seems to be going on, Job needs to confess his sin. And Job, in chapter 19, uh, relates how terrible his life is, how unfairly terrible that is, and just when he seems to be at the end of his rope, God, through his Holy Spirit, gives Job the knowledge of the Savior to come and how Job himself will see him. And he, in essence, then makes this prophecy. I know that my Redeemer lives, and in the end he will stand upon the earth, and I with my own eyes will see him. And, and this gives Job hope and strength to carry on, at least for a few more chapters. And then as you read Revelation, you saw some very vivid and perhaps confusing pictures uh, of the end times. And I asked you to focus on the beasts that you see in chapter 13 to identify them. Well, the first beast in chapter 13 comes out of the sea. And this beast we identify as human government. Human government only exists with God's permission, yes, but human government, because it is human government and all humans are sinful, human government always ends up opposing God. Now, we want to be very careful, too, when we talk about human government in this context, not to say that we have the right as Christians to rebel against the government. No, Romans chapter 13 makes it clear that we submit to the government as God's representatives, but the sad truth is government often doesn't know that it is God's representative or act as God's representative. So while we obey, while we submit to human government, we never put our faith in the government. I even take it one step further. We don't trust the government. <laughs> we, we understand that it is there for our good, but sometimes it will not act in our best interests because it is this beast from the sea that, that rises up uh, and is given authority by the devil to oppress human beings and to especially Christians. The second beast, the beast from the land, works hand in hand with the first beast in order to suppress the truth of the gospel and oppress Christians. And this particular beast we identify as the false church, the church that claims to be Christian but truly isn't. And well, again, we don't want to take it too far and make any particular identifications to one person or one even de denomination. This, we, we just lump every false church together underneath this beast of the land. And this beast tries to speak uh, with the voice of God, but, but it cannot because it has rejected the gospel. We will see this picture then morph, uh, or, or you did see this picture morph then in Revelation 16, Revelation 17, uh, Babylon, the prostitute riding on the beast and finally being rejected uh, be, be because there, there are tensions between these two entities sometimes. But in the end, uh, God is warning Christians that the institutions that are there uh, are not always going to be working in their best interests, but God will overcome them all for the sake of his people. Now, as you finish up the book of Job, you come at the end and see the resolution to all of Job's problems. And I would ask you to compare Job's life before he, all of his troubles began to the end of the book. What's the same about Job's life and what's different now? And then, uh, as, especially as you read Revelation chapters 21 and 22, the last two chapters of the Bible, if you would, write for yourself a description of heaven that's based on those particular chapters. 
I'd like to thank Nick Todor, our administrative assistant, for facilitating these videos and PowerPoints all throughout the year. I'd like to thank you for joining us, and we will have our wrap-up, uh, our last wrap-up here in church on the first Saturday of January, and discuss anything that may have come to mind in your final readings. God's blessings on your final week of reading through the Bible.